finish line. Okay, the radio pit crew is far from slow. The lights no longer get low. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Checkered flag would be sweet. Crank it up. Oh, it's racing. Crank it up. Okay, the radio pit crew is far from slow. The lights no longer get low. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Oh, it's racing. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Checkered flag would be sweet. Crank it up. Oh, it's racing. Crank it up. And hello again, everyone, and welcome back here to PT Racing TV. We're live here today, here with our drivers of the fat of the of the uh, excuse me, 
Pedal Metal Racing League as the Super Late Models are now here to pull off the fight, pull off the show. It's go time here for our drivers, and we'll see them here now live on the show. Hi, get everyone. I'm Christian Crusader Shriver. Welcome back to the show as always. We're getting ready to go down here and throw down here at Thompson International Speedway. Very long, lengthy kind of track, very paperclip style length, but it does have those bankings in between that do allow for these drivers to really pull on a bit of a show and pull on a bit of a fight. As you'll notice here throughout the night here as we get settled in for the, the, the show. Let's take a look at our lining, starting lineup here as one of them has already kind of left the uh, stratosphere. That'll be the five of Chantel Throttle Pottle on the pole to her outside. It will be the one that's been trying to knock her down a few pegs. Matthew Hoffert in the 84. Run number two. It's going to be Jeffrey Todd Duff. 72 it is outside. Stanley Pottle in the 48. Row number three. It's going to be Jerry Keeney in the 61. And his outside, that'll be Dustin Sonaker in the 66. Our final starter will be that 87 popping up now. Kevin Baker, your last of the field to rock it in and fight their way off. And it is only time now that we get ready to hit him up by and hit this track onto the show. We're ready to go racing here down in Thompson. laps tonight here not 100 laps this will be a pretty much per temporary shootout for these drivers we have a broadcast coming up later today here as well our boys from spartan logistic management llc look to keep their series going with only about six races left on the show which one of them will transfer in to the playoffs and which ones of them will transfer into the finale you'll see that and then some here on our show but for now, we are currently here with Puddle in the Metal Racing League as our drivers look to get settled down and ready to go here for the action tonight. Our onboard cameras are something to keep your eye on time and time again here. This will definitely be all over the place. There's a lot of them, and there's a lot of runs that come from each end of our spectrum, each end of our drive shaft. You can see the blimp cam being put to use. And there are even our cockpit views as well being put to use. That's the Stanley, that's Stanley Pollard's 48 Transformers machine. Three Canadians and four Americans in this one. It's going to be an international warfare here at Thompson. Seven drivers on the track. 50 laps to the distance. Green flag out. Let's go racing. Out of that gate here, a little trouble there. The 61 of Jerry Keeney and Todd Tuss getting into it. Stanley Bottle going for a little spin there around out of turn two. And the caution flies out for the first one. And it looks like Matthew Hoffert actually getting a little bit of a runoff down there. Getting a little bit ahead of Chantel. So that means he'll start on the gun for the next one here on the restart. We'll take a look here at the 48. What happened here? Looks like this was just kind of a bad timing situation. Yeah, they unfortunately not able to get a good run off. Kind of got a little too hard and ended up smacking the wall protection. And the 87 of Kevin Baker finishing the job for him. But there is more to the story here. Take a look up front. Look very carefully here at old Jeffrey Todd Tufts. And then the 61 of Jerry Keeney right behind him. Keeney pretty much just kind of drove that thing right in at old Todd Tuss. Todd not having anywhere to get out of, and you can just see that was not what I think any of them had in mind or had intentions of. But we're going to take a look at the cockpit view here with Keeney and just give you one last little flavor rundown as we're getting ready to get back to the action. I've heard a full sentence, but I've never heard a full sentence in turn one to use your other guy as really like a bat as a wall protection there to get out of. Holy cow. Race officials not calling for any caution or penalty there. They said there was just hard racing, so we'll let them be at it, I guess. Well, it's a Keeney, actually. Maybe going to the back a little bit here. Looks like he's being told, you drove a little too, dip, too deep there, my friend. So the officials now getting in there. The one thing I will not do around here is try to challenge those officials and try to mess with them. They will not play your game. Trust me, I've already tried. The 87 of Kevin Baker now going to be up three spots here. The hard charger award of the night going to him immediately out of the gate. We'll see if he can get the 87 into a good run here. 
That's one thing that was very impressive last time he was here was he fought hard there with Matthew Hoffman and Dustin Sonaker. While Chantel, the throttle bottle, pretty much just all but ran away from the field. Will we get that same vibe here tonight? Our field will work their way around on the back straight away. And this next time by, it's time to go back to the green flag. Caution lights are off. Fly fans are on their feet. Flag up in the air. And it's time to start waving it. Here we go. And Kevin Baker, just like Stanley Paul just a minute ago, having troubles get off the start. Jerry Keeney. Oh! Getting right in the mix now. He ends up going straight into the wall protection. Big trouble there for Keeney. And the five of Chantel already getting a hot start out of the gate, getting ahead of the field here. Jeffrey Todd to Matthew Hopper. Trying to fight it out a little bit here. We saw this battle before. Back at Iowa Speedway, Jeffrey Todd Tuss did give a little bit of a rundown on Hopper and he didn't even made his way up there with Chantel. But, but right now, Todd, looking like he needs to get a little bit more than just a little more run. He needs a little bit of help here to keep up with the pace, keep up the distance. Offer right now challenged and in trying to challenge up there from the five of Chantel Pottle as currently our cameras seem to be having a malfunction there when it gets into that camp, which we'll gets that wall protection. The Good Ranch Services, number 84, a little tribute, if you will, back to the late great Dale Earnhardt Sr. in that old design car. Obviously, it's not the man in black car as we've known before here, but it's definitely still one of those unique schemes you always know just by looking at it. Jerry Keeney going to the bottom line there, trying to get out of the way. Of the five, as Chantel continues to just rock it and field down across the strips and across the track. We're on board with her. Tech Energy number five, pretty much a solid competitor, solid driver right now in the season. She is all but dominated except for one race. She had lost that one race at Martinsville Speedway in what could have been considered one of the crazier races we've seen in a long time. Offer catching a break there when Stanley Powell unfortunately got a little too hard into pit road and ended up costing the race there for the five. This go around though, we were told earlier today, these drivers will have no qualms or no troubles about putting up a fight, putting on a little bump and run that they have to just stay with them. Stanley Pottle right now rocking it into fifth place here, still holding up the Transformers 48 as Kevin Baker leans in and continues to rock it in fourth. How about that as well? Last time we saw him was back Sunday night at Xfinity and Kevin Baker, maybe the shock of all shocks that night. Walked away with a second place finish at Bristol Motor Speedway. It was a shock that many folks were not experiencing. That night as well, the five of Chantel would finally knock that curse off her back and get a win in the Xfinity Series. So she is one of the only drivers to have ever won in back-to-back -back series and season in a single season. One in the Super League Miles and the one in the Xfinity Series. Done on the same week of all things, too, while you're at it. The only thing left to finish that trifecta would be literally to win down in dirt, but right now the dirt star is going to have a week off. They will have to prepare themselves for the final two races ahead. They will be going down to Williams Grove Speedway and then to Bristol Dirt Track one more time for another fight out there. Season 6 of the Dirt Series will be coming to a swift and close end in the next couple of weeks, but this next week, just be sure not to worry about what not seeing your drivers out there. They are just taking a break to see for this week. Myself included, because honestly, after Wii Sport, I need a break and a half. I literally jammed my left leg driving that Fox racing machine literally into that corner wall, and I don't know how bad I choked, but I can tell you right now, Dustin Swinaker couldn't have told me any better when he said problems when I hit that, when I hit that wall there. About 30 laps remaining here in this in this main event here right now. Currently, Chantel the Throttle Bottle is still your race leader, while Matthew Hopper tries to keep ahead of old Jeffrey Tatas in the 72. 
Coming right through the field now, Dustin Sonaker up into the wall protection, trying to get out of the way for the drivers, trying to stay away from that end. Dustin had a bit of a battle and a little grudge match here at Todd Tufts the last time they were on the show, but this time does not seem to be the case. On board here is Stanley Pottle here as the number 48. Continues to bolster up and build up some speed. One thing really to note about him, he's very, may you not know, be very superstitious, very under control at the wheel deck, but the biggest thing I'm noticing as well is that he has yet to really pound the corner and the turns. He seems to be trying to stay off that wall protection more than anything, but the biggest problem I'm noticing is he's just not getting into the corner just right. He's kind of trying to dime it off, but he's not building a lot of speed off the exits. He's kind of trying to keep it short and sweet. And these are custom setups these drivers are running, and I can tell you right now, doing that kind of momentum that kind of day is not going to help out your cause anyway when it comes to catching up to somebody. Speaking of catching up to somebody, it looks like now Matthew Hofford actually has got a little bit up on the uh, throttle Chantel Hoddle. Looking at our lap times right now, this is the difference maker here for both drivers. Hoffert getting quite a bit there on Chantel, but Chantel seems to be starting to kick it back alive now. That is one thing I've noticed with her before, is she likes to literally play with her food, if you will, and let, let her prey think that she's giving them an opportunity. She did that back at Bristol, where she pretty much just owned the most of the track and most of that race that night, staying in the fight and staying in the head, and then that one last little break ended up giving her the win. Just, but I'll tell you right now, Bristol was definitely not a race I think any of the guys want to remember or think about, myself included. Just a bad night, unfortunately. That track definitely commands respect and presence for a reason, but it is a short track, so definitely had uh, had everybody going that night, that's for sure. This mile-long track, Thompson North Speedway, right now, it's put to the ultimate test here, being a battle of the Super Late models. As Jeffrey Todd does, tries to get the setting too, just a little bit closer in the fight, in the zone. Not gonna possibly knock down the 84, the 84 trying to hold him back, trying to hold him off. Todd is getting plenty of openings though, and getting a lot of speed built up. You can see him really being very conserved, very under control there. He's not wait, not wasting any motion. Basically just kind of peeking in opportunity, peeking in his shots and waiting for the shot to come out. Kevin Baker and Stanley Pottle are actually going to have a little bit of a battle here. Kevin Baker down one there while Stanley moves up in the fourth. Oh! And Kevin Baker just completely smashing the right side wall in there on the outside skirt. And that might not be good for him because he's got a throttle Chantel bottle coming up on him. Kevin up high, trying to hold it down, trying to hold the fleet in. The five just making a nice clean getaway. And once again, more lap traffic going to get in the way. And Stanley Pottle, I don't know why he's backing off when he knows Kevin Baker's coming up on him. He should have stayed in the throttle, buddy. What are you doing? Stanley, have I not taught you anything when it comes to racing? You don't let somebody just pass you by like that. Ugh. It irks me, man. Like, I just I try to we work with him so much. We work, we're trying to get him better, but... If you're making moves like that, man, you're going to give every driver an opportunity just to strike at you when the iron's hot, and that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, for Todd Tush trying to make a little getaway here, a little bit of a battle into the zone. Sneaks up right there in the 87 to Kevin Baker. Baker will go a lap down here on pretty much the guys and gals that are running the entire front up. Dustin Sornaker slowing down tremendously. And Jerry Keeney. As all but called it a night, the uh, 61 not giving a uh, good shot here tonight. He's got plenty of problems and couldn't quite get it going here at Thompson. Five, literally almost a two-second difference, and with only 18 laps remaining, 
you just know this is pretty much all but secured if she could just continue to go through. Only one loss down to Martinsville, and then everybody else pretty much been put in the dust or put in the way. The tracks they ran at, Iowa, Oxford, Thompson here tonight, and many others. But again, we haven't really talked about this enough, though. La the last time we did see Hoffert, you know, get into victory lane was back at that race at Martinsville Speedway, and he it wasn't handed to him, far from it. He had to really hold off his run and hold off the charges. He knows he, they were coming up quick and they were coming fast because he burnt the tires in, but he made so far of a lead that it didn't really matter once I got up to him because they couldn't have found a way to really pass without giving him the old bump and run. And the 84 of Hoffer definitely, I know, that night was all in arms and all up in, his, all up in the grill there. Just thankful he got that win in finally. It was good to see him get that win, and of course, he's still good to know that he is still charging out there. Jeffrey Todd Tuss 72 trying to get up there with that 84 though and trying to hold him down as well the five just well pretty much left the building. Steve McDonald's coming on board here tonight saying go Chantel. Lee Puster Paul saying another win for Chantel. Stanley watch out she is coming. LOL he never listened not even to me. Ah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The Pottle Clan seems to have a thing or two to listen, but I think they could just, uh, I don't know. I think what Chantel listens, I think she listens to the track more than anything. Stanley, I think if he figures that out and listens to the track, I think he's going to really be a top-tier guy out there. Because he's got a pretty good run, and he had a good car tonight, but he let Devin Baker and Dustin Sornaker around him, and now Sornaker actually holding down fifth, Kevin Baker. At this point, I think he was just trying to just coast his way around. I don't even think he's trying to really do anything special, anything big. I think he's just trying to hope for the best and stay in this one. The top four finish for him will definitely secure him some points and a nice little field day for Hoffert. If he doesn't start getting a few more wins in soon enough and start to get some more points in this grab, uh, honestly, I, I think it might be a tough call for him tonight. Joe Donovan, good racing. Everyone will be back on next Thursday night. Joe, good to have Joker Joe. Good to hear from you, sir. We haven't heard from no Joe Donovan in a while. We certainly do miss you, sir. So hopefully we do get to see you next week. We have been waiting for you, sir. Yep, right, Todd Tuss right now, rocking it in third, looking for a one last run there on Hopper, but it looks like the tires might have given up on him. This has been a long, hard haul for him and a long, hard fight. And you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to literally go up high side, then back in quickly and then go in the corner. We call that diamonding in racing. Basically, it's when you try to form a perfect diamond edge off the corners and then on the exit, you pretty much send it straight back down. Instead of getting the car to rotate like you would on a dirt track where you want to try to straighten it up quickly while, ro while kind of sliding around the corner, Asphalt being, you just want to keep it straight as possible and not turn the wheel in as much. Here, you're actually wanting to turn it in a bit more, so that way you can just pretty much full send charge it off the shot. It's like a slingshot maneuver, but we call it diamonding and racing. Kind of listen on that throttle though, number five though. Let's take a listen to that. I think she might be kind of coasting a little bit. I don't even think she's really trying to charge too much there anymore. Yeah, I can almost hear that throttle. I know it seems like she's going pretty hard on there, but you can actually see it in her car. She's not nearly as putting as hard the momentum on that car anymore. She's actually coasting the car around, basically letting the car just kind of take a set, settle down, and then just get back on the throttle just ever so slightly. That is definitely what she's up to, and it right now is working to her favor and her advantage with five laps to go. The five sees five, and she knows it's almost over with. That's what's on Acre in the St. Wood 66. You'll actually hear a little bit more about him tomorrow night with me on the booth. That's right. I didn't lie when I said we had a doubleheader tonight, but tomorrow night we have a doubleheader as well. For the first time, we will ever see the I the uh, stock the I Racing Stock Car League. They will join us here on the show. Here, there will be a late night broadcast. But let me tell you something, folks. 
we'll have not just me, but our good friend down there in Dustin Slonaker joining the party. As we can join the party, apparently Stanley Pottle finally found a way to join the party. The 48 Transformers just passed in for the top five. How about that? Stanley Pottle finally starting to kick it up a notch, starting to build some speed. He got it going. He saw the pass around the 6 6 in turn one and two and just completely opened the door up. He'll now walk his way ahead and looking to try to maybe hunt down Kevin Baker. Problem is, Baker, a good 38 seconds ahead, trying to catch him with what they have left on the track. Uh, good luck with that. Down the back straightaway here, the white flag this next time by for the five. We'll see her to victory lane one more time. She just needs to make four more good turns. Here we go, white flag is out for the five. When she came in tonight, it was six wins. Mark it down to seven, boys. Seven and one. And Chantel, once again, claims another victory here tonight. I think at this point we might need to just get a whole replay overlay for that one because I think that we haven't really seen anything this pure dominant and everything like that in so long but nevertheless it's another victory for the five and Chantel Bottle can celebrate down with her teammates and crew down on the rock in Newfoundland she'll have another one to her credit here's your top five your top seven now start from seven Keeney does not finish sixth to Sonaker fifth to Stanley Pottle and a surprising little upset against Sonaker fourth to Kevin Baker Third to Jeffrey Todd Tufts. Good showing from him. Second goes to Matthew Hoffert. Always bad fast and showing his momentum, but just fell short. And then first to Chantel, the throttle pottle, rounding out your field here tonight. So we'll show our third place finisher, second place and first. We do not have time to get these guys and gals in tonight, so I apologize in advance. But we'll make sure this race is up on YouTube. We'll get the photos done and all that so you guys can see everything here on our end. And be sure to like us up here on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all that so you guys know when we go live and when we go at it here. Always appreciate everybody tuning on board here for these shows and coming on out for these races. It has been my pleasure and my honor to call this one. And don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We have one more race coming your way. We're heading down to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, where I lie, Spartan Logistic Management LLC's IROC Challenge Series. It's going to be a thriller here tonight. But for now, I must leave you with this. Be safe. God bless. Take care. I love you guys. I will see you here shortly.